in his negotiations while denying it at the time, agreed when signing us into Europe at the start of the 1970s that he would run down, Britain would run down, our fishing industry on an island nation, manufacturing and uh, all the other stuff and mining, because right from the start, they had stitched Europe up and set out a structure all the way back at the start through these people where they were dictating which countries within the European uh, superstate would specialize in what. And what they decided Britain would specialize in is service industries, uh, banking and the city of London. And what has happened since is that all the things that Heath agreed to run down when he joined have been run down massively with great, unbelievable uh, devastation for families and people's lives. They don't give a shit. And at the same time, the things that Britain was supposed to specialize in, they're the ones that have been expanded and expanded and expanded, not least the city of London. This is not something that happens by chance. It doesn't happen by random. It doesn't happen in a projection a few weeks or months or even years forward. What is unfolding in front of our eyes is a conspiracy to enslave humanity in a global Orwellian state in which the, no the whole area of what they want has been set out for beyond decades and it will continue to play out until we stop it. Predicting the future is easy. <laughs> Predicting the future is easy when you uncover what the projected agenda is, because if nothing comes in to intervene and stop it, it will happen. That's what makes predicting the future easy. That's why all these things are happening now that were in my books years ago. It's not because you're a bloody prophet, but unless we stop it, it unfolds. Our role now, it's coming to our attention, is to stop it and put the spanner in the works. And we have the power to do it. This is the world they want, and we are standing symbolically in it. And I'll tell you what I mean. They have over there many representatives of the banking system. A banking system which lends people money that doesn't exist called credit, and then charges them interest on it. Oh my God. How can the police stand there and not arrest them. Anyone else lent someone so, or gave someone something that didn't exist and asked for money for it, their collar would be felt. Bankers, no problem. And the reason is the banking system is absolutely at the foundation of how the, en the enslavement is being played out. Because 2008 was not a crash by accident it was a crash by design. The world they want is symbolized so perfectly here. They want a world in which there is a tiny, tiny few of mega staggeringly rich people that have now again, like globalization, been given a name, the 1%. It's less than that actually, in the, the really upper echelons. They want that group running everything and living apart from the rest of humanity um, in, in, in like a Hunger Games situation with the capitals in, in the Hunger Games. They then want not a gradual going down of income and wealth from the 1% down to, into the population. No, no. They want the 1% to come down here and that's the population. They want one mega rich few and a mass of mega poor uh, people. Now, when you look at the graph today in America, for instance, it's shocking because if you look through the past, there was some kind of, kind of gradual incline between the poor and the rich. Now you look at it, they are targeting what they call the middle class, 
the people that thought they were okay in, in the world before, and they are crushing them, and the graph goes like that now, and then up so high in the 1%, that part of the top of the graph has to be put at the side of the other because it goes off the page. That's where we are now. What's happened is that in the last few uh, years, since 2008, is that crash has been used to do this. It's been used to create a fantastic transfer of wealth from people to these people and their, they, the ones they represent. There's unknown in human history. We first of all had the crash. It's a banking problem. Then, well, by the way, the people involved in causing that crash were people like Alan Greenspan, head of the Federal Reserve, in, in, league, with, in league with people like uh, Robert Rubin, who was Clinton's uh, Treasury Secretary, and uh, Timothy Geithner, who was involved with the Federal Reserve Bank. Both of those people are in there now. And, and when Obama came to power, after these guys had crashed the bloody economy, he appoints Geithner as his Treasury Secretary to sort it out. And what does he do? Stands back in amazement. He decides that hosing money at banks is the way to sort it out. So what we had as a result of that was the transfer of wealth on a fantastic scale from people through uh, governments bailing out the banks to the banks. As a result of that, there was another transfer just shortly after that, which so many people here and around the world will well bloody know. And that was the transfer of the problem from governments to the people through programs of austerity. So, and as a result of what happened in Cyprus, we're going to the next stage now. They're taking governments out of that transfer of wealth from the people to the banks and the elite out of that and they're going straight to the bank accounts of the people. And that precedent set in Cyprus means that when the next banking crash comes, they're probably organizing it now, they'll say, well, we can't bail out governments saying, we can't bail out the, uh, the banks after what's happened in Cyprus, it won't be fair. You've got to go to the bank accounts of the people. And this is the idea. And what they're doing is they are stealing the, the money of the masses to create this structure that I've just described. And so I say this to people around the world who think they're OK, who think it's not their problem, who think, oh, no, I'm making a few quid. I've got a nice house. I tell you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not part of this network, they want your money, too. So join us, come together. Uh, and there's another connection here, which is, which is, which is really important because it's now really starting to emerge. In there are high tech people, people like uh, Eric Smith, the executive chairman of uh, Google, who, 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 who not by coincidence have had a conference at this very hotel very recently. There is, uh, a program which has been unfolding for as long as you can see going back of turning humans into robots, turning humans into software programs. Up to this point, modern times, last few years, it's been done by programming their perceptions so that they see the world the way they want them to see it. If you can program someone's perceptions you program their belief, you program their behavior. Perception is the stadium on which the whole thing's played out. What they want to do now and are in the process of doing is going another stage beyond just programming perception. They want technology inside the human body and interacting with the human body so that the human body ceases to be what it currently is in terms of its ability to perceive itself and the world. And Google is absolutely at the forefront of this. Along with a world government, world central bank, world army, uh, etc., uh, single currency, they want a microchipped population which would have external control of the physical mind, not that there is any physical mind, body, emotions. Now, what, that, what Google is there for 
is to develop this technology. And people like uh, the Bilderbergers, some of them, especially politicians, are there to sell this technology. It's to introduce it into society with us thinking it's a good thing. And you look at now how fast humans have become almost partly connected to machines. You walk down, you walk down a station platform in the morning. Oh, look at that. It's the thing here. What was that? What, what, is that? Did that grow? Was he born with that? What's going on? You know, oh, I'm just going to Twitter. I'm just going to Twitter the fact that I'm going to the toilet and I'll be back in a minute. All right. Are you going to tell him if it's a number one or a number two? I mean, it's too, too much information, man, you know. But that's what's happening. And these Google Glasses, again, this Google Glass, it's all about getting people closer and closer to um, interacting with machi machines and accepting technology into the human body. And they've got this thing, Google, called Google X. It's a secret laboratory in California where they're developing this stuff. Now, what this interacts with is an organization, one of the most sinister on the planet, called DARPA. DARPA is the technology development arm of the Pentagon. It's developing all this stuff to take us over technologically, to create uh, robot armies and all the rest of it. Interesting that um, the uh, head of DARPA, until relatively recently, was a lady called Regina Duggan. She ran this sinister organization, DARPA. She then had a rather remarkable career move. She became an executive of Google. And this very week, she was promoting uh, for another company of which she is an executive, Motorola, something you may have come across in the papers called the electronic tattoo. And what she was saying, and the Motorola was saying, they want to replace passwords with the electronic tattoo. And that is the totalitarian tiptoe. The, the uh, electrical uh, tattoo is one step from the internal microchip. This is where we're going and we need to see it and we need to stand in front of the truck and say enough, no further. So, in all these different and various ways, this is why it's so vital to connect dots to see the picture. In all these various ways, what's going on in there ain't people having a chat. It's people in all these different subject areas developing a coordinated, agreed policy that can be played out in the public arena while manifesting, as all know, it's just random. This government's decided that, that government's decided that when it's all coming out from the spider. So we are here today at a fantastic moment because never ever in the history of this crowd have they faced a crowd as big as this knowing what they're on about. Never before, never before. This is history, but we need to kick on from here because there's three things that are vital to the few controlling the many. One is to keep the many in ignorance of what they're doing. That is now being put right by the alternative media and the communication of this information. A second one is the population being kept in acquiescence, the many kept in acquiescence to the few. That's the next one we need to sort out. Stop acquiescing. We need to come together and have a mass, non-violent, non-cooperation campaign the world over in which we refuse, we refuse to cooperate with our own enslavement. Because only if we refuse to go or cooperate with our own enslavement is it possible for the few to do this to the many? And there's the third thing they absolutely desperately want.